Hello dears, good morning. Welcome to my lectures, lecture number 6. Um, so, so far we have discussed many issues but in a uh, non-technical fashion so that those important concepts you will remember and of course one by one we will take them and uh, treat them in details technically. So what you have understood so far that machine learning, we develop model using some tools for some given data, okay? Because we are trying to explore through the model the information which is trapped in the desired information which is trapped in the data. Now today we are going to discuss one very very important widely used tool for creating a machine learning model and perhaps you have heard the name of the tool it's very 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 well known the name of the tool is linear regression so we'll do um, in-depth analysis of um, given a data set how to create a model using linear regression technique. So this technique is all about giving some trade of the data. Suppose, for example, we have a data of COVID-19. Every month wise we have data. And suppose we just took the data of initial months of March so let us consider that day is represented in x-axis uh, and in y-axis we have number of deaths. So these two features we have taken. Days, every day there are some deaths. So we have plot along x-axis the number of days and y-axis the number of death. Now we can decide to take some data say uh, 20 days data for regression analysis and rest of the data we should kept for testing of our model. So now you have the concept, okay, you have total data say for example 30 days data, 20 days data you are taking as an example for plotting, okay. And there you do regression analysis. What is the objective of regression analysis? The objective is to design a predictor. Okay, it's a jargon term. Uh, basically, to design an hypothesis. Okay, using the given data set, you can call them training data set, 20 days data I have divided. And then after developing the model, I will test it. How to test? Because 30 days data I have kept aside for which I know every day how many deaths were there. And now I will use my model which I have developed using 20 days data. Okay. And I'm, I will use my predictor or hypothesis for the extending 10 days which will give me the each day number of deaths. So for 10 days I know exactly what was the number of deaths and my model now is telling me what are the number of deaths. So if they tally very closely I can say oh we have developed a very good model. Okay. Because my model is now able to predict. And once it is predicted that the model is uh, designed up to your uh, expectation it is performing up to your expectation which you can of course uh, calculate by testing as I discussed then you can use it as a predictor for other coming months ok so this is the basic objective of uh, linear regression model which we are going to uh, ok now uh, let us focus on that linear regression model how to develop so, 
I have I am using this board and this is part A, another part B. It's very simple. Relax. Okay. So as I was telling, I have COVID data sets. This is x-axis is actually days in March, for example. I have taken some data and I am creating a model using the data of March month. And this is number of deaths. Some notations, okay. So these data are known. For example, first day there were some uh, two days and this uh, second day. So suppose hypothetically these are these are not real data. Real data you will practice in assignment, which I will give. But assume that these are my data points, right? And I would this is my decision. And I see as a designer, oh, data is almost linear. So I design now a hypothesis H suffix W is a which is a function of x. This is the number of days. Suffix W means W is the parameter of my model. So H function of x parameterized by W say is equals to W zero plus W one into x. Because I have decided that I will fit a linear line. That's why I have designed my hypothesis like this. Okay. So, what is my design ob uh, objective? Somehow, using these samples to calculate the parameter W0 and W1. Because they are not known. What are known? All the samples. Suppose there are m number of samples. Here I have shown some few samples, 10, 12, but it could be million, it could be billion, okay, so relax. M is the number of samples. Xi, Yi means for any given i equals to 1 to M, for even any given X, what is Y, that is my sample which I have collected. My first objective is to define an objective function. Okay, that function will be containing the parameters which are yet unknown to me. So let us denote, and this is object, called objective function, sometimes error function, post function, and I will discuss why they call so. So let us see here there are two parameters only w0, w1, so this objective function will be uh, containing the parameter, two parameters, it's a function of two parameters only. Okay. Now my uh, basic principle is, principle of least square method, this is called also, that I will make the line in such a way, because it, again the line actually will vary, will depend on these two parameters, right? So I will figure out these two parameters in such a way, so that these are my given data and these are my corresponding to each uh, x value say I am here this is given y and this is actual y and this is what my predictor is telling me it should be corresponding to this x this should be y but actually corresponding to this x this is the y so this is called error. So if I can figure out for corresponding to each sample, what is the error? Why there will be error? Because I have decided to fit a line which will not pass any of that but which will be a general line and we will discuss why we do so. We could, we could do like this. Okay, so I have I have uh, data, so let us just join them and calculate a curve. But this is not done. Okay, why? Because my basic objective uh, is not to fit a curve with the given data. My basic objective is to predict beautifully unknown in the unknown zone, right? So this is the known zone or bandwidth on which we are designing the uh, predictor 
but this predictor I will use for these days or for beginning initial beginning days. Okay, uh, how, how about in February or in April? Okay, what will be the date? This is my objective. That's why we cannot overfit incidentally. That is called overfit. We cannot draw a line like this. Instead, I should draw a very general line which will generalize well uh, for this is basics of statistics. So that is, uh, that is my objective is to minimize this function j. If the function j is actually calculating the error. Here is the fact. Okay. So how I am calculating error? I am calculating error as I say for each x value I have a theoretical or uh, theoretical uh, y value this is hwx okay if i put x known x i will get this value and i am keeping these two as unknown and corresponding to the same x i have some actual y you see okay uh, and you see this is how we are calculating the error corresponding to each sample okay each and every sample um, I'm calculating the error now wait a minute sometimes you see the error this this value is positive and sometimes this minus this is actually negative for example here h actual value of y is more than the uh, theoretical value which I have designed. So this term will be negative. On the contrary, here corresponding to this sample, this is actual y, but my hypothesis, uh, uh, my predictor is telling no, this is y. So this is the error. Okay. So this will be positive. So sometimes the j will be positive, sometimes the j will be negative. We do not want all kinds of hassle, right? So what do we do? We just try to write the function of j, I just try to make this square, okay. If I do square, then all the time, of course, function j now has to be uh, redefined, but let us call function j as a square, okay. I will do this here, otherwise the function method gets changed, okay. So now you see, I am rewriting for sample 1, this is my theoretical value which I am getting from my design, this is my actual, I am squaring it and I am summing them all for n number of samples, I am calculating tiny error and I am summing all the errors for n number of samples and I am trying to minimize the error. So this is the basic or fundamental logic. So I am calculating error corresponding to sample number 1, error corresponding to sample number 2, etc, etc, up to sample number n. So this now becomes my function which I need to minimize because this is error characterization function I should call it, square of the error. Okay? And again you know very simple we can use calculus based method in optimizing a function, I need to calculate the derivative, okay. Here it will be partial derivative because I have in the function two parameters, w0 and w1. So here we are finding, we are just differentiating this function with respect to w0 and making it to 0 because I need to optimize that function. So just simple differentiation, okay, you can see this is for sample number 1, differentiated error, sample number 2, up to sample number n, and I am making it 0, which is giving me, so there are n number of samples, so 2 cancels out, okay, and 1, 2, 3, 4, so m into w0 plus w1, 
this is not varying in sample, right? It comes out and summation of i equals to 1 to n xi minus summation of i equals to 1 to n yi <coughs> that is equals to 0 and let us denote it by a equation number 2. Similarly, with respect to w1, I am now differentiating. Again, now w1 we are differentiating. Okay. So, w1 x1, so it will be multiplied by x1. 2 will come because square was there as earlier. And so this term multiplied by the coefficient of w1, which is here x1 on x2, x3 up to x up to xn. Okay. And then again, I am figuring out uh, in notation in, uh, in compact form to cancel. Again, I am making it to 0. This is another condition. And 2 cancels out. And then I am getting w0 is coming out. W0. Okay. So, w0 into x1, w0 into x2, w0 into x3, etc. etc. w0 into xn. So, I am writing it w0 summation of x i 1 to n plus if you just see w 1 is coming out okay uh, summation of x 1 x 1 so x 1 square x 2 x 2 so x 2 square so x i in general for all the samples I am writing it x i square minus summation of uh, x i y i x i y i Right? x1 y1 x2 y2 so I am, I am calling it equation number 3 so we have got two very very simple but very elegant equation just trying to minimize the error <coughs> between actual data and my hypothesis ok my line so I have fit the line very logical right I have now able to fit the line in such a way that it fits the data the best because error will be minimum so not physically we have analyzed so these two equations are called incidentally the normal equation okay and they are beautiful equations because my unknowns are there and only samples are there and I have the samples. So I can always calculate all the sigmas, etc. etc. Everything I can calculate. So I will just try to solve these two equations, 2 and 3. They are linear equation. Okay. I have fit a straight line. So they are linear equation. Okay. Um, and I will be able to, and I have this parameter, they are linear in nature. Okay. So I can rewrite, so you can see, I can rewrite the equations 1, 2 and 3 by after substitution. I, I advise you to do that, uh, so that you can directly solve those two equations, very simple, okay, school level algebra, uh, but again you can substitute this, so chances of making any mistake will be minimized. So, I am substituting A equals to, for example, this, B equals to this, C equals to this, D equals to this. And now, I am rewriting my uh, equation 2 and 3 in this form. Okay? So, two simultaneous linear equation in W0 and W1. These are the two unknown. All other are very much known parameters. So, once the sample is there, all the parameters are known, name is the number of sample, they are some samples, square, summation, these, that, okay, so these are all known. And then you can solve, is it? So, solving um, very easy, okay. I can divide it by entire equation by A, then I can divide the entire equation by A, then W0, W0 <coughs> uh, becomes separated, and then uh, I can just eliminate so, W0, W0 are free, so they are gone. And doing that, this is very easy. So, I, but I suggest you do it. Doing that, in the process first, you get W1. 
somebody can do the other way around also that is divide this by a divide this equation by c making w1 free and then if you just eliminate uh, this equation with uh, this w1 then you can get w0 at the beginning anyway whatever you do the final result will be the same okay so w1 equal to ab minus d into number of samples divided by a square minus c into m similarly w0 equal to bc minus ad divided by c into number of samples minus a square so now i expand means these are all substitution i just put those values here and now i get w0 and w1 values so you can get a concrete value if data set is given to you okay and the moment you get a concrete value then this is your hypothesis or i can get it call it predictor sometimes we call it predictor because this line will be useful for predicting future predicting okay so that's the very elegant and very simple but very useful uh, uh, linear regression analysis on a given data thank you we'll continue uh, more on this